Hello, welcome back to the second tutorial for beginner cross stitch. So if you have got a kit, we can now start. So, so the first thing we need to do is to separate your hoop. So you need to, I needed to use a screwdriver to actually undo this. Generally you don't with a hoop, but with this one I found it was too stiff. So I needed a screwdriver just to undo that screw. So you have two pieces. So if you'd like to stop the video and just separate your hoop. And then looking at the instructions for the chart here, you will see that we have the symbols that are on the threads are on the bottom here. And so with the cross stitch, it says two strands. So we're going to use two of the strands. I'll explain that when we come to it. And for the back stitch, so the, just the lines, we're going to use one strand and then we'll come on to the French knots later. But at the moment, we're just going to be working with these full boxes there. And so this is the cross stitch for two strands. So the first thing you do when you're going to do a project, you can start in, some people do start in a corner. I generally always start in the middle and then I know that it's centered and I'm not going to run out of room on the fabric. So you will see here, there is an arrow and also at the side, there is an arrow. So you follow those two points in and then where the center is, is what you're going to start with. So I'll just check. So the center is these pink ones here. So that means that we need to thread our needle with one of these pink ones. So if we look at our chart, then we will see, if we match it up, it is this one here, which is actually orange, not pink. <laughs> so, we are going to thread our needle up with some of that, so I shall... Now on this thread, you can see, the thread is actually made up of six single strands twisted. And we just need to use two strands. So the way I do this is if you hold on to one of the strands, and just lightly hold onto that and then pull it up. I recommend you cut it about 40 centimeters, which is where you hold it in your fingers up to the bend in your elbow. That is about 40 centimeters. It doesn't have to be exact. It's just so it is a decent length, but not too long. And then what we're going to do is then fold this in half. So you've got a loop one end and you've got your two ends the other end and we're going to thread the needle with the two ends. So if we just put the needle in the eye of the needle, pull it through. So you've got the loop one end and the two ends hanging down. So that's your needle already. So because we are going to be Starting in the middle, we need to find the center of the fabric. So this one actually shows it because it's been folded in four, but literally if you didn't have that, you just fold it in four, then get hold of your needle. It doesn't have to be exactly, but put it where that cross is, and then you know that that is where your first stitch is going to be. Now, one thing to pay attention to when putting your first stitch in is your design. Is it square or is it a rectangle? So if the fabric is a rectangle, it means do we need, which way do we need it? Do we need it that way or that way? Because if you have it the wrong way, then you're going to run out of fabric. And believe me, we've all done it, <laughs> especially when you put it into your hoop because you lose sight of which way up it is so it's important to be very vigilant on that this one is looking at the chart to check it is one two three four five six seven across and one two three four five six seven down so it's about centered so that means it doesn't matter which way 
so what I'm going to do so I don't lose my spot when I put it in the hoop it's hard to see where the center is I'm going to do that first little cross so I'm just going to pull that through so I've got my loop in the front then I'm going to go diagonal from that up back through And what I'm going to do is come through the center of that loop. And this is what we call a loop start. So now that's secured it on. And then what we're going to do is go back through that same hole, not going through that loop, separate from that loop, go back through the same hole, pull it, and that means it's secured it there. So you should see that there's no actual knot but it's secure so that's a much tidier way of starting so that's your first cross so now we can just put our needle through for a moment just to attach it so we can put our hoop on so if we put our base hoop down first and then put our fabric over the top so it's central because we're going to start in the center then put the other hoop over and then just pull it on. I must admit this is not the easiest hoop to use. It's not something I generally use, but I'm going to use it because it's in the kit. <laughs> Once again, don't be put off because there are other methods that we shall go through later on. So if you don't like this, don't worry, we'll find you one that you do like. <laughs> so now we've got to tighten this up. So we're going to use that screw at the top. So I so I'll just use my screwdriver and we're just going to tighten that up. So hoops are used so you get better tension. Some people don't use a hoop or anything. I use a snap frame generally. I like that better and I shall show you that in the future. But it's nice to just do it as a kit. So when you want, to, so we've tightened this up so it's quite tight, but to make sure it's tighter, you can pull the fabric. Now, when you pull the fabric, don't pull it outwards, pull it inwards so you're pulling into the center because what can happen with some hoops if you pull it outwards this top piece is going to ping off <laughs> so that's not going to actually work but if you pull it inwards that will make this tighter and so it should keep your fabric taut and so your tension should be better so it'll look better so we have got our hoop on, we're all ready to go, we've got our centre, so we've got half a cross stitch at the moment, so we're just going to finish that one off. So if you take your needle back out and put your needle in the opposite corner, sorry I'm doing it around the camera so it's, <laughs> it's a bit difficult, so you come up and over. Don't worry I'm going to go through the cross stitch, we're just getting the first stitch done, so I shall tell you what we're doing so on the chart I generally like to color it in as I go so I know where I am it's harder with a colored chart to see where it is but I'm going to color that one in that we've just done there so we have just done that stitch there so now I'm going to go above those two stitches and do those two stitches above So the main rule for cross stitch is that you always go in the same direction. You will find your way. You don't have to go the same way as I go, but you always have to have your cross, your top cross in the same direction. You can't have one cross in that way, one go in that way because it will look messy. So you want all your crosses to go in the same direction. So generally go from bottom left to top right and then top left bottom right 
Now, because I usually go from bottom right, so because I usually go from bottom left, if I go back through that, it's going to pull that stitch out. So this time, I'm going to go top right down to bottom left. So it's just because I want those crosses to go in the same direction. So as you can see, all my crosses go that way on the top. That way at the bottom, that way at the top. So they're all in the same direction. And that's all it is at the moment. All you have to do is find the colour that corresponds with the chart and then just follow it. So we have just done, just colour those in. So we have just done two up, two across, okay, of that colour. So we're now we're going to do all the ones in that colour. Carry on. So now I'm going to come down. So you can go whatever way you want to go, whatever's joining, just carry on with that while you can with that colour. So I should do a few more stitches. What you can do as an option when you have more than one stitch if you want to now you're used to your crosses is you can do more than one of the first legs so I'm doing two stitches there and then coming back and doing the second leg so if you have a big block of color you can just do one way and then come back and do the other way but it's important to be careful of your counting when you do this on this part of the chart where we have these yellow dots over the top of the other ones this is where your French knots are going to be so you don't do those at the moment so you just ignore those dots at the moment and you just try and see the symbol below so we can see it's still these ones below it so we're just going to carry on where these dots are so I've got three above it I would say when you're beginning that it's best to do one stitch at a time. As I say, if you feel that that's a better way, doing a few stitches, then that's fine. You can do that. Now I'm coming to the end of my piece of thread here. So what I'm going to do is take it to the back, turn the hoop over, and then I'm just going to run the needle through the back of a couple of stitches. You don't do a lot of stitches, two or three stitches, it's fine. Just run it through the back, pull it through, and then that secures it. And then you can just cut off the excess, and then you're ready for your next colour, or carry on with that one. So for demonstration purposes, I'm going to change colour. So I'm going to go on to the yellow that's here. So I'm going to match that up with the card. So I can see on the card it's this one here. So I'm just going to take 
one of those threads from the six strands about 40 centimeters long I'm going to fold it in half so we have those two ends and thread those two ends onto the needle now when you pick this back up again you might think oh which way was it and that's when it comes in really useful to colour it in or to highlight it because then you will have a certain shape of what you've done and then you can match that to the shape that you have there and so I'm going to start just here with this separate colour so once again I am going to put the needle in the front pull it through so I have that loop go diagonal go through the center of that loop pull it down and then push that needle back through not through the loop separate from the loop back into that hole pull it all the way down and then that secured it and then you can finish off your cross by coming up And going back in diagonal remembering to go the same way as you've gone the other way so all those crosses are in the same direction you need to do four across here so I'm just going to do a little run of half crosses So that is my four and then we have two above that so what I'm going to do so they don't get left behind is do the half crosses up here and then come back again and literally it's as easy as that all you're doing is just following the chart and doing little crosses As I said, try and mark it off as you go so you don't get lost. And that is cross stitch. So I'm going to carry on with this and I shall be back with you in a few days to see how you're getting on and we shall go from there. Please comment down below if you need extra help. Please ask any questions with things I'm missing out. There's no such thing as a silly question because if I've missed it out and you don't know the answer and you're struggling, that means other people are struggling as well. So please put all your comments and questions down below so I can go through those in the next video. Perhaps we'll have, the next video should be just a stitch along. So I'll just be stitching with the camera on me and I'll answer any questions. I think that would be the best thing to do off the top of my head. <laughs> so let's have a question and answer video next where we have a stitch together and you can ask any questions of anything you want to know. And I shall do that and we'll carry on just doing these basic stitches before we get to some back stitch. But we've got a lot of stitching to do before then. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it's guided you in the right direction and it's been clear. So please leave your comments down below and I'll see you again very soon for the Q&A. Take care. Good luck. Bye for now.